We're back at Charity Fields in Desford. It's October now and it's very late in the year for us to be cutting the grass. Most of the field that we're in has been cut for hay a month or two ago and it's then been grazed by cattle but we've cut off this area, defended it with an electric fence so that the cattle can't come onto an area that has very late flowering plants plants like Devil's Bit Scabious and um, we're now cutting it with Austrian scythes. We would normally have cut it mechanically but cutting it with Austrian scythes is enabling us to finish off this patch. We'll remove the electric fence and let the cows on but um, last week we collected a lot of the seeds. I've got um, a couple of them here. Um, Devil's Bit Scabious and uh, betony and in my hand here I've got a large number of seeds we collected far more than this last week and we've cast them into areas that uh, have got bare earth in an area that we've removed all the brambles and stinging nettles from um, and when we've raked up the hay that's been cut we will um, cast it into that area as well it's called green hay and we hope it will shed further seeds um, it's late in the year to do this, but it's going well. The people with the Austrian size are skilled. The grass is heavy, but they're managing to, to cut it. Alan on my right and myself are volunteers with the Leicestershire and Rutland Wildlife Trust. We're not on one of their reserves, but they come and help me with some of the tasks here. Uh, Rob on my left works for the city council and they both got Austrian size and we've been tackling this. I've got a traditional rake and um, we've cleared this patch of grass and flowers. <clears throat> Rob, um, I don't know much about this. Um, I notice you've got something like a dagger in your yeah. hip you've got a big blade and a big bit of wood. Um, yeah. How does an Austrian scythe work and what's good about it? Yeah, it's, it's brilliant for, um, well, first of all, it's a brilliant way to mow. It's great fun. Anybody can do it with a little bit of training. And um, we're not using any petrol. We're not disturbing any of the wildlife. And everywhere would have been mown like this before in the medieval period up to mm. probably Victorian times before yeah. um, machinery came in. So it's got a long history. This is actually an Austrian scythe, not an English scythe, quite different. The blade's different and the snaff, which is the wooden handle, is different. You can see here we've got all these holes. You can adjust the two handles. The scythe mm -hmm. um, has to be, it's a bit like a fountain pen really, it has to be fit for the person using it for the ergonomics, otherwise you can't mow properly. So you can change this per person, yeah. which is great. You can't do that on an English scythe, it's more bes made bespoke to the person. Um, the blade is, is um, it's made, well the whole thing is made by uh, a company in Austria called Schrock and Fuchs and they make loads of, uh, hundreds of patterns of blades. We get about five here. This is a 650 millimeter ditch blade with a stone point. It's great for beginners, but it's also a very capable blade. Cut through um, grass like this, it will go through nettles and small brambles as well as mowing fine grasses, yeah. so it's great. The steel is different to an English one. Uh, this is a very malleable, which means it's soft. So you have to sharpen it with a wet stone. So we've, you've got water in here about every five minutes. So it needs sharpening quite often because yeah. it's soft. But the beauty of it is, is that when it starts to get a bit dull, um, as the angle gets too, uh, too steep, you can peen it, which is where you use a jig or you can use a hammer and an anvil. And you hit the, the edge, this edge along here, and you squash the metal down. It doesn't, doesn't crack. Uh, and then you get, your, you get a thinner mm. angle and then you can hone it again with a honing yeah. stone uh, and it th then becomes sharp. Yeah. With a, an English blade, um, you have to use a, you have to grind it for that mm. process. So when you hone it on an English mm. blade, again, the angle gets too steep, it stops cutting properly and you have to have a, a wet stone bath um, to grind it back down again, yeah. which is quite a skill and quite difficult to do. So this is much easier. Yeah. Um, also a much more effective scythe in my opinion, yeah. so it's, a, it's, a, it's a, brilliant, a brilliant piece of This paper. has been difficult mowing though, hasn't it? 
yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. It's, we had a lot of rain yesterday, so that there's a lot of moisture in in the sward, which is what we call the the, the grass height, uh, and it's laying in very different directions. Ideally, if something was laying that way, you'd want to cut it from behind so the scythe comes in and hooks it from underneath and yeah. slices it through. Um, here, it's sort of in all all different directions, so we're having to. Normally we would get a nice big arc yeah. going and it would look it would be much easier and you get a lovely sort of area that you're going. But here we're having to stop and doing little bits here, little bits yeah. there. So it's a bit more tricky, but still still perfectly yeah, usable. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm now going to fork up some of this grass and wildflowers and all the seed heads that remain after the cut and I'm going to walk them into another part of the reserve very close by where there are far fewer flowers. This is a, a green hay experiment or action where we're seeking to perhaps speed up the natural spread of the flowers from one area to another. So I'm going to then shake them in that meander. This is an area that we've removed brambles from and although there's a certain amount of other vegetation coming through, um, by doing a spread of the hay that's rich in seeds. Um, we're hoping that some of the seeds are going to drop onto the earth and next year they'll begin to grow. It might take several years but we'd like to have the scabious in here as well as the area that we've just come from. We're actually very close so I think they would have spread but it might have taken many years and we're trying to speed that process up. For more information about the Barnes Charity and its conservation work, please visit our website.